Hello everybody, it's GB. Welcome back to today's video. Today's a little bit different. It will absolutely be on the shorter side because, well, I'm not quite sure how long I can keep this up with minimal mistakes, and I'm sure there will be mistakes, but I'm going to try my best to put my reading skills to the test. That's right, I'm reading off of a teleprompter, and I have pre-written everything I'm going to say so I don't have to time, like, spend time and pause thinking about what to say next. I'm only slightly concerned about how I'm going to handle my breathing. I'm not sure if fat people who do fast talking do it for a very long time, or if they take pauses or breaths, or if they just breathe in while they're speaking, but I'm sure I will try a variety of different things and see how it goes. Honestly, I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to write enough. This video will be too, too short, but fear not, I had an idea. An idea that I got from a video on one of the world's, or actually the world's fastest talker, John Moshita Jr. There was a YouTube video about him, and he said that he practiced fast talking by reading the famous soliloquy from Hamlet over and over, and I thought, oh dang, that's perfect, because I had to memorize that in high school, and for some reason, a big chunk of it stayed with me. So now I should be able to read that kind of thing quickly, but not too many mistakes, because I'm familiar with the words. The very end lines I forget a little bit, but again, I wrote all this down, so I'm just going to be reading it. I also thought it would be funny to read terms and conditions, because that's what fast talking usually reminds people of, those parts at the end of ads or commercials, where people are talking about side effects or terms or conditions. Yeah. Yeah, see, I just had to take a breath there, so there we go. One little edit. That makes sense. I did actually take a voice acting adult class in Chicago. It was really fun. I figured it would help me with my channel, being able to articulate things in my voice, and I do think it did. It was really good practice and knowledge about how to parse through text, about how to, like, think about how you can change your voice to come across, to, uh, come across different ways, and I'm already stumbling over my words. This is something I do a lot on my channel because I have a lot of different characters, some that I have to make up on my own, and some that I have to try and impersonate from pre-existing universes. I find that I can't usually perfectly impersonate people's voices, but I can get as close as possible to cadence and how they speak. What part of the sentences they tend to emphasize are any words that sound particularly different in their particular accent. We all have accents. My Twitch stream thinks that I say button weirdly. Button, 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 button. I'm not really sure. I didn't really grow up with a very strong accent, I believe, but I do know a lot of accents. I do do a lot of accents when I speak, and I know that's actually quite common, but I can't remember why or who it's common among. But in terms of characters, like for example, I just did a video of Hypnos from Hades, and he speaks very much like, welcome to the house of Hades, glory and death. Lots of jumping, very similar to Jesse from Team Rocket, but it's a very different type of jumping. She would talk more like, welcome to the house of Hades, glory and death. And although their jumping is similar, their tones and nasaliness are very different. Hypnos is almost like a clear muppet. It's nasal, but it's not. Jesse is extremely clear with some of what most people would call a uh, sultry. I feel like there's a better way to describe it, but like I said, I have to keep talking, so we gotta go, go, go. Why don't we do the Team Rocket motto, speak talking in ASMR. One, two, three, prepare for trouble and make it double to predict the world from devastation. Do not help people to the donation. Do you not, you not mess up. I have to try it again, but I think I can do it. The Team Rocket motto, speak talking in ASMR. One, two, three, prepare for trouble and make it double to predict the world from devastation. Do you not help people to the donation. Did announce he was a two and love to extend our reach to the tons above. Jesse, James, Team Rocket blast off at the speed of light. Surrender now, prepare to fight, fight, fight. Me, oh, that's right. I'm pretty sure I did a flub in there too anyway, so I don't even think that counts. But James, who is my cousin who appropriately cosplays at James and my Jesse, we're actually working on revamping our Team Rocket costumes. I'm very excited about it. Hopefully I'll have a new Team Rocket video for you guys soon. I think it's been literal years and years since the last one. We even had a script partially written for it, just never got to do it. So I do really want to get a wig commission for her. That's more of like a hybrided pony, because we're looking to do more of like a hot drag look instead of a cartoon look because Jesse and James are so over-the-top personality-wise, I think it would look amazing, really suit them. Plus, it would be fun to wear on anime conventions, and typically when you let me ramble, I'm going to eventually lead it back to anime conventions or cosplay. Did you know? I actually started as a cosplay content creator. My Instagram was called GB Cosplay for the longest time. I had little business cards. Can you hand out business cards at conventions so that people who take photos of you can find you later on social media? And oh my goodness, I quickly started ASMR on the side because I was like, oh my gosh, I think I can actually connect the two and do both. So now I do. But in case you were wondering, some people come in new here and they're surprised when there's like a wave of cosplayer character content from me, and they're like, what the heck is she be doing? And I'm like, oh baby, I was a cosplayer first before I did ASMR. But I did learn about ASMR before I learned about cosplay. I started watching ASMR in 2010, went to my first anime convention in 2014, then I started my ASMR channel in 2016, so there you go, all the facts. It was a very similar aha moment when I discovered both communities with the ASMR. I remember the memory so, so clearly of a holy crap, this is a feeling that I've never been able to define myself, let alone begin to wonder if other people felt it too. I cannot believe that I now have access to content that is catered to the sensation, this is the best day ever. And walking into an anime convention and being like, holy crap, I cannot believe I didn't know that there were thousands and thousands of people that want to dress up and nerd out about anime and pop culture and perform skits and just exist and this is the best day ever. And I've never stopped either one since. Formative years, formative years. I was a theater kid, of course. That's where I kind of got the performing thrill. But I knew that I wanted to entertain in general. It's my biggest source of happiness, being able to entertain people, whether it's serious content or comedy content or relaxing content. And there's a plane coming, so I'm going to have to stop for a second, but that's fine because I need to catch my breath anyway. But I've kept it to things that I'm interested in and I've realized that that's where I shine because the passion comes out. Like trying to have a YouTube channel that isn't really about something that I'm interested in would be impossible for me. ASMR, I could do all day. And I do. 
so I do. And I think that's why I have a lot of respect for our full-time streamers, because while I love entertaining, I love video games. I do not have the capacity to do it all day, every day. Anyone who streams knows that the difference between playing a video game on your own for three hours and playing a video game on stream for three hours is night and day. A lot of the time, streaming will energize me, but at the same time, it's energy draining. It's quite hard to explain, but I do have a 24-hour stream coming up, and for something like that, where there's like a clear purpose and a marathon, I'm very energized by chat, streaming, etc. But once it's done, I'm like, oh, poop, I gotta sleep for the next 30 hours at least. But I did set a date. It'll be after this video goes live. Oh my goodness, since I'm filming on a schedule now for two weeks in advance, all just have happened. I hope it went well. Okay, enough rambling. I think we gotta get to some reading. Let's do some Shakespeare. Are you ready? Let's go. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether to snobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die to sleep no more, and by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die to sleep to sleep perchance to dream I. There's a rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's a respect that makes calamity of so long life, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay. I'm actually reading faster than my thing, so I'm gonna make it even faster. One second. Take two, because I want to do it faster. To be or not to be, that is a question whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the things and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die to sleep no more, and by sleep to sleep we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks of flesh is there, too, to the consummation valley to be wished, to die to sleep, to sleep perchance a dream eye, there's a rub, from that sleep of death which dreams may come, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause, that respect the next calamity of so long life, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's good humility, the pangs of despise, the love, the loss of lay, the insults of office, and the spurns that the patient merit to be on the way when he himself lives quite as make with bare bodkin. Oh, a little bit too fast there. It's going a little bit too fast, I can't read the whole thing. Let's try it one more time. I need a longer. That's the problem, is I actually need a longer. What is it called? What is this thing that I'm using? I'm using a teleprompter. I need a longer teleprompter. I think um, maybe if I had it all written out on a thing on a page, I could probably read it faster. That's what I should do. I should just have it written on a page. I should have printed it out and had it on a piece of paper. I probably could read it fast, 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 fast. I'm going to read it off my phone so I can get actual speed. To be or not to be, that is the question, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die to sleep no more, and by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is there too. It is a consummation of value to be wished, to die to sleep, to sleep perchance a dream, either as a rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There is respect that makes calamity of so long life, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the laws delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might as quiet as make with a bare bodkin, who would fraudle spare to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly door with a pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and movement with a great regards their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. I lost it at the end there, but that was pretty good, and we're gonna keep going. So, how did I do? How did I do? Did I do it? Did I mess up? I probably messed up a little bit, but that's okay. Listen, I have some beef with my high school for a variety of reasons, but two things I will not beef with. My English teacher, because she was literally the smartest person I've ever met in my entire life, and I wish that I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was actually in school, because it still devastates me a little bit that I was never able to fully reach my learning potential. Um, when you have a good teacher like that, I struggled in her class a lot, and she was notoriously very difficult, but she would give us so much good information, and Shakespeare is one of her super passions. The other thing that I have to not have beef with my high school about was that they brought a Shakespeare troupe to our school for a show, and holy mother on earth, if you ever get the chance to watch Shakespeare live, and I'm sure you could if you wanted to, because I believe there are a lot of Shakespeare troops out and about, please do it, because reading Shakespeare and watching Shakespeare is, again, night and day. Those actors are so dang talented, and hearing and seeing how it was supposed to be delivered makes it all make sense. So we had a Midsummer Night's Dream, which, to be fair, is a comedy, but I swear to God, I've never laughed so hard in my entire life for a live show, and I've seen some comedy comedy shows. This is the funniest show I had ever seen in my entire life. I remember doing the thing where I was silent laughing, like smacking my own legs, because I could not adequately, exp adequately express my delight, human emotion super weird. But anyway, that's a memory of mine. Bless you, Midsummer Night's Dream. We also saw Hamlet another year, and that was not a comedy, but so, 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 so good. I would actually love to see more if I think about looking it up myself. There are a bunch of things I have interest in that I would love to delve into. One of those is the Iliad recently. You'll see that I have at least one video coming up where you're being treated on the battlefields of Troy. Super cool. And I have Hades to thank for that, and then I did the Hades, the Song of Achilles pipeline to the Trojan War, the podcast, and now I feel like I can actually handle reading a translation of the Iliad on my own, but typically I enjoy having someone very qualified pointing out things that I should appreciate and understand. So I'm considering taking an online class. But when I look it up, there's so many, but not really ones on the Iliad in general. So anyway, if you're in college, if you have to have a class that I can just audit, let me know, okay? I'll be in your breakout session. It'll be a great time. And there is no better feeling on this earth than when you're in a class simply for the learning and you're just so happy to be learning and there's no stress or pressure of credits and grades and yuck, yuck, yuck. Although I lied because the greatest feeling on this earth is people laughing at your jokes and that is a 
fact. Next up, we have a terms and conditions to read, and then I think I have rambled enough. Give a big old shout out to Steven, who's been doing my subtitles. I have to cut him some slack and not make this video too long, or else that may be considered legal bullying. Terms and conditions, let's go. I can usually find terms and conditions on giveaways and sweepstakes, and the first person I can think of that's doing a giveaway is Mr. Beast because he's always doing a giveaway, so let's head over to the chocolate bar website because I'm pretty sure he's trying to give away a chocolate factory, and I'd like to see the terms and conditions of that. Our website uses various cookies. These cookies allow us to distinguish you from other users of our website, which helps us to provide you with a good experience when you press our website and also allows us to improve our site. Agree. I guess. Okay. Oh, baby, I found it. It's the official rules. Hold on to your hats. Let's see if I can get through this. I'm going to read the grand prize trip restrictions for as long as I can, and then I think we're done here. Whew. Grand prize trip restrictions. Actual prize value depends on the location of the winner's residence and dates of travel. Travel must be taken on the dates designated by the sponsors tentatively anticipated to take place on a date between April 2022 and March 31st, 2023. Final dates to be determined by the sponsor in sole discretion and must be reserved based on the sponsor's sole discretion. Our sponsor will have no further application to such winner. Dates of departure and return are subject to change and at the sole discretion of the sponsor. Any difference between stated value and actual value will not be awarded. Winner is responsible for any transportation not specifically noted in these rules. Winner and guests must travel together on the same itinerary and responsible for obtaining all necessary travel documents prior to travel. Certain restrictions, as determined by sponsor, may apply. Sponsors will attempt to accommodate winner's preferred, preferred itinerary, but all specifics thereof will be at sponsor's discretion. If winner and guests cannot comply with these restrictions or any other portion of these official rules, the prize will be forfeited in its entirety and an alternate winner may be chosen. Winner and travel guests must travel from major airport closest to the winner's residence, as determined by sponsor, and its sole discretion. Any picture identification requirements associated with air travel are the winner and travel guest's responsibility. In the event the winner lives within 100 miles from Greenville, North Carolina, ground transportation only, not air transportation, will be provided to and from the hotel. Travel arrangements must be made through the sponsor's agent on a carrier of the sponsor's choice, and trip must be taken on the date of the sponsor's choosing. If winner and guests cannot travel on the date specified by the sponsor, the prize will be forfeited in its entirety, and the prize may be awarded to an alternate winner selected in a random drawing from among all the uh, remaining eligible entries. Okay, guys, I think Ben just got home, so I got to stop anyway. My lungs are burning. My chest is saying what is going on right now. But that was ASMR speed talking. This might be the lowest quality video on my channel to date, but I really wanted to try it, and I have no idea will trigger anybody if people enjoy this. My voice also sounds like I'm really getting a cold right now, so sometimes people really hate that, but sometimes people really love it. Anyway, this is my content for you today. 